Thank you, Halla. So I approached Halla, and she and I were talking, and she's like, you know, we'd like you to speak at this event. And I said, fantastic. What do you want me to speak about? I'll speak about anything. I'm a marketer. Just give me a stage, and I'm good to go. Because uh, it's all about the PR, right? That's what you do. And she says, you know, you do video a lot, and video has been very effective for Vanilla Soft and how you've established your brand, how you've differentiated your product, how you've kind of come out of obscurity and, uh, and are now far more visible than you ever were before. Can you do a session on that? So I said, a session where I can show videos and show me? Absolutely, I'm in. So we're gonna have some fun with that. How many people here have heard of Vanilla Soft? It's okay, you will not hurt my feelings. All right, we're making progress. This is fantastic, okay. How many people here have never heard of Daryl Prale before? That's okay. Let's see if we can't have some fun and fix this. Because this is about videos. This is, gonna, this is gonna be an interactive session. We're gonna have a lot of fun with the video. Yep, back up. There we go. So you haven't met Daryl. Guess what? Here's a video. So Meet Daryl. Whenever I'm ready? Yeah. Right, whenever. Uh, okay. Like, right now, maybe? Yeah, right now. Okay, so now. Who here, show of hands, do not like my jacket? Okay. This is how I get from here to there. How are the changes? This one sucks. Let's do this one again. My name is, ah, oh, that sucks. Stay there, you're fine, you're fine. I usually have no idea I'm gonna say either. I am pleased, thrilled, delighted that you are back. All right, so that's an example of branding. Whether it's done well is another story, but that's an example of branding. Here we go. So that's that. Let's have some fun with that. Now, I question for you. How many people here have brought their own personal videographer with them today? Nobody? No, that's weird. That's weird. How many people here have actually done a video for any reason in the last week? We got a couple. We got Michael Lalonde. You're on the video every freaking day. <laughs> Anybody else we got? Oh, so this is good. So we probably got about, say, 10, 15 in the room or so. So let's, let's do this reverse. Put your hand up if you just did not put your hand up. All right. So this is why we're here. Let's go through some basic facts about video. Just, you know, some, I'll state the obvious. So we know, you know, over 80% of the traffic is all video-based. We don't know that. This one's making the rounds. But here's some interesting stuff to look about as you talk about bringing your product to market. We're having lots of conversations today about who does this and what's the messaging and how do I get it out there? Well, let's just look at the facts, all right? 59% of executives say they would rather watch a video than read text. How many people of you have video as part of your product launch plans, your product messaging? Okay, those people that had your hands up, are they boring product videos where you go click, here's my screen, here's my screen, here's my screen? Yes, okay. How many of you are actual thought leaders speaking about why your product is so compelling, so amazing? And is it less than 60 seconds? There we go, you see? So you were, this is the challenges of when you do video. So we'll go a few more things here. Viewers retain 95% of a message when they watch video compared to 10% reading text. 72% uh, of customers would rather learn about a product by video. 92% watch it on mobile, social media posts. How many people here are on social media? All right, that's good. How many people here are on social media with their company and their product, talking about the product? And when you're doing those posts, you can't say, see us at this event or we just launched a new release. They're actually talking about your product. Hands up still if you are. All right, you see the number's getting smaller every single time we do that, right? So social media, 48% more views if your post has video with it but video generates 1,200% more shares. Why are you trying to bring your product to market? You're trying to make awareness, you're trying to get the knowledge out there. You've got a pain, I've got a solution, we should get together. But if nobody's seeing that, then that's a problem. But you add a video, 1,200% more shares. People that you're not reaching. Remember, your audience is finite on social. But if I share it, now you get access to my audience. 
And if somebody in my audience shares it, that's an audience you don't even know about. So you want that whole multiplier effect. 85% of videos watched are without sound. That's on Facebook, same would be true on LinkedIn. For those who do videos, hands up, how many of you caption them? Okay, we're down to maybe five or six. So, question for all of you, your social media, your LinkedIn, your Twitter, your timelines. When you see a video, you're walking around, you've got your phone going, and it's, your phone's probably on silent like mine is right now, and you stop and you see there's a video and there's captioning, do you stop? Hands up, do you physically stop and look? Of course you do. You're reading the message. You give that extra second or two or three. If you're trying to bring your product to market, that's what you want. You want to hook them. You see the talking hands, you don't know what's going on, but the message is there. If you're not using captions, oh my gosh. And by the way, captions, guys, captions cost pennies on the dollar these days. There's almost no excuse for it. Uh, but now mind you, it changes if you're on Instagram, 60% will do it with the sound on. So just kind of know your audience. I want to show you an example. When we started introducing video, the conversation we had around our office was, what's our objective? Because we can do video just for video's sake, right? Oh, we gotta do a video, we gotta do an ebook, we gotta do a white paper, we gotta do a blog post, we gotta do social media, we should do video. What's your objective? That's the important question. So, for us at VanillaSoft, let me share a little story. Uh, I loved the panel before. We were like a 20 year overnight success. That's us. We, you, know, you who didn't put your hand up, we've been in Gatineau since the year 2005. We have 5,000 customers worldwide. We're like, we get a gob of money in the bank. We're a SaaS company that's got it figured out. My two competitors have each individually, and those are companies for context, you may know them, one's called Salesloft, one's called Outreach. They've both raised over $250 million. $250 million. I have raised exactly 1% of that. So how do I compete when they can outspend me up the wazoo. And the wazoo is a technical term, just so you know there. They can really outspend me. Well, here's the funny thing. Video costs almost nothing. And you can use it anywhere and everywhere. That young man is back here filming me right now. What's gonna happen? That's gonna go on video. It's gonna say, Daryl was just at the Ottawa Product Management Association. Now I reach hash, you know, Ottawa PMA. I reach all of, everybody who's in the Ottawa product PMA. Hash Ottawa, I reach all of Ottawa. And now my brand is associated with the Ottawa Product Management Association and Product Camp. If you think highly of Product Camp, as I've had people say, oh, I've done Product Camp in, in Toronto, I've done it in San Francisco, I'd love to do it in Ottawa. You know, product Camp is, is a whole thing, right? I'm associated with Product Camp. Now that doesn't mean I'm any good at all. But you start to think I'm good, Stupid, I know, we're all human, right? We get suckered in on the emotional thing, on the, on the brand association, on that, well, if he's there, he must be a good speaker, because Product Camp doesn't have just anybody, and he must be somebody. I'm a sponsor, that's why I'm here. Um, so you gotta understand, cause and effect, that's why you're doing video. So for us, it was how do I change that show of hands so that you know about us? For us, it was how can I engage with my target audience? My target audience are salespeople and senior marketers on social, they live on LinkedIn. I don't have 250 million. But you know what? Social media is free, just to post. To engage in conversation, to post videos, to share conversations, to get your reach out there, to build your reputation out there, to make people aware of who you are, who your company is, what's the problem you're solving, how do you solve it differently, who do you compete with? Guess what? I tell everybody on social media, I compete with sales loft and outreach. I don't hide it, in fact, I embrace it. What do I do? Because I want all of their followers to follow me. Hash sales loft, hash outreach. And then they see my videos. And they ask me the simple question, I get this all the time. Oh, you do what they do? How are you different? I thought you'd never ask. Let me show you this video. All right, because I know you're gonna share it 1200% more times and be way more engaged with it. So that's a lot of the objectives around video. You can do it for personal branding. One of the things that Vanilla Soft had was fantastic corporate brand when it came to social media. When I started two and a half years ago, they had over 35,000 followers on Twitter. That's not insignificant. My competition had 5,000, 10,000. We, we were nailing it, but we weren't getting engagement. Why were we so good on social media and we still weren't getting that follow-up? Why did nobody know about us? So I approached the senior leadership and I said, here's what I want to do. I want to brand me as much as I want to brand at the company. 
Why is that, Daryl? You want to you know, get a big eagle? What is it you want to do? I said, people buy from people. So we're going to brand me, and I'm going to say in every single video, and I'm Daryl Prell, I'm with Vanellisoff. Over and over and over again. And out of that, we now speak at every single major conference you can think of. Our booth traffic has gone from, you know, decent booth traffic whenever a show, to being mobbed on a regular basis. And every conversation goes like this. Vanilla Soft, I've heard of you guys. What do you do? Right? I love it because when I started, it was Vanilla Soft. Okay. And off they go. So they'd heard of us. My whole objective was to say, I don't want to win the deal. I want to be in the conversation. So I wanted them to say, you know what we need? We need a sales engagement solution like Sales Loft or Outreach or Vanilla Soft. Just get me invited to the game. And that's where video comes in. You can do it to outmaneuver the competition. And that's exactly what we've done. I'm going to give you an example of a really unique example here. This was just launched this week by my fine product marketing manager, who's in the back of the room there. Let me see if I can pull this over this time. I've got it all figured out. This is what he did. I didn't even know he was doing this. This just appeared. You gotta give him credit. This is awesome. Give it a listen. Hey, I want you to join me as I dive back into cold calling. I'm in marketing now. I left sales behind, but I'm gonna jump back in for a friend of mine who I was talking with recently. He just started a small service business and he's really good at what he does, but he's not so good at selling. So I thought, I'm gonna help him out, and on my lunch break, I'll make a few cold calls. And then it occurred to me, I work at Vanilla Soft. I've got software that can help me do this. So I want you to join me as I find out how easy it is, or how hard, to set up Vanilla Soft so you can run your own cold calling campaign. I'm gonna be entering my own list of data, I'm gonna be setting up my own call scripts, my own cadence, and we'll take that journey together. So stay tuned, follow me, and we'll go through this journey together. I'll be updating this with some videos, probably some screenshots or some screen captures and giving you updates about how it's going. And then when we get to it, hopefully very soon, I'll be making some calls and we can track my activity and see how well I'm doing on getting those leads. So come along. Look at that, simple. That was just over a minute. I wanna say in a minute, eight seconds, give or take. And the beauty of that is that he got massive visibility, massive visibility, because they're like, what a cool idea. That is so cool. We've all got that buddy, that friend, that pal who's got a business that isn't doing so well, and you know, they're great at what they do, but they're not so good at selling. Well, guess what? My software helps you sell better. And he's gonna step in, and he's, he's bringing them along for the journey, for the story. He's not selling a damn thing. This is what I'm doing. I'm gonna share. I'm going to get it on the tool, I'm going to tell you how it sucks, how it rocked my world, how I didn't understand it. I'm going to tell you what's really cool about it. I'm going to tell you the results. Well, at the end of the day, look at that. I made a lot of sales for my buddy, my buddy's successful. At least that's what we hope the outcome is. We don't know. This is reality TV here. All right? But this is what sells the product without selling the product. He's going to, he said, uh, and I'll, throw you, I'll show you some screenshots, too, along the way. He's going to show you the merits of the features and the functions that my, that my product has that are better than my other competitors products. Is it contrived? No, this is 100% legit. And people get emotionally invested. He looks like a nice guy. I want to see what he's doing. That's the power of video. There was no pitch anywhere in that. So that's huge. Let me come back over here. All right. So those are different ways you can use video. One of the questions we get asked all the time, or comments we get all the time is, okay, Daryl, I believe you want video, but I don't have the gear to do video. And that's a fair question. So let's address the gear question, okay? In fact, let me stop a question. Let me, before I even break the, the gear question, let me ask you a question. How many people right now have a, a figurehead at your company who is more than willing, like is like, yeah, I'm, I'm your person, to be, Let's call it the brand ambassador of your company. They will do videos and videos and videos and videos and videos that you don't have to twist their arm. How many people here have that role at their company? Look how, that's not bad. For those of you who have it, high five. Look how many don't have that. The biggest fear you're gonna have doing this, and you're gonna see me show you here a little bit, is you, 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 not anybody else, you need to put yourself out there. 
You're product marketers, you're product managers. You own the product. This is your baby. Do you have credibility? Do you have confidence that your solution works? Then put yourself out there. Now let me tell you the side benefit of doing this. How many people in this room have ever had in their professional life more than one job? Okay, so we've all had to go look for a second job, haven't we? Imagine that video content being on your LinkedIn profile. Imagine the recruiters finding it and going, oh look, they've got their messaging. They know their value prop. They're, con they're persuasive. When I hired Bergen, you, whom you just saw, part of the process was I said, I'm getting tapped doing too much video. I need a mini me. Bergen said, hey, no problem. Bergen used to be at Titus. Let me show you some stuff we did at Titus. Wow. It was internal stuff only, but he was willing to put himself out there. And I said, if I hire you, this is part of your job description. Yep, no problem. Boom, here you go. So you need to do this for you, as well as for your product. That's the first part. Second part is if you're gonna do it, you're saying, well, what about the gear? Guess what, how we started. When we started, today I have one full-time video producer, and I have one full-time intern. That's Nathaniel at the back. When I began, I was the video producer, and I began with this phone here. This very phone you see was my video production, and I did this, and I spoke into the phone, and that was it, I posted it. And then I got really good. I actually uploaded the video, iMovie, or if you got an iPad, LumaFusion, and then I, I would edit it a little bit while I was doing the rest of my job. And it was, when I say really good, I'm being cheeky. It was, all I did was trim the front and trim the back because that was me hitting record. I don't want you to see my hand hitting the record button. And that was me trimming the back, saying, okay, I'm done, and walking up and turning the camera off. That's all I did, post. And then I got really crazy. I bought a wired lab, it goes in here, it goes on here, it cost me like 30 bucks on Amazon, and now I had better audio. That was it. As time goes on, you can get more gear. Today we have a live stream studio. We have, it's permanently set up. We have a talking head, what you just saw at Bergen do, studio, that you can walk in there, it's permanently set up. The point being with the talking head studio, is that if you, or say a customer shows up and says, I love your product. Do you, you like your product? Yeah, oh, I love it. Would you say that in video? Um, sure, notice we wanna move fast before they say, I gotta ask for permission, right? <laughs> Come on into my studio that's already set up, hit a switch, go. No, like, let me get the camera, let me get the guy, let me get the lights, let me get, you know, no, go. I've got it, golden. So whenever I'm inspired, I go, I do a talking head thing, and, I gone, and I'm gone again. We got to the point that video was so much part of our strategy that I had to hire a full-time person. And I went to the, my CEO, and I said, I want a budget for a full-time person. He's like, what the hell do you need a full-time person for, Daryl? Oh my gosh. And I'm like, do you know, I am the world's most expensive video editor. I want to be able to walk in, go, hi, I'm Daryl. It's done, leave. And they edit it, they caption it, they optimize it for each platform, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever, off it goes. And that's what we did. When it came three months later, I said, okay, I'm ready to hire that person now, because I had planted the seed. He was like, oh my gosh, I can eat it. So when I came to him and said, we want to get an intern, he was like, yep, not even an issue. There was no issue getting the ROI because we saw the visibility. So my point is, the gear does not have to be an issue. Half my videos are done with me on, web, on a webcam where I'm, I'm doing a, a screen share, I'm capturing my screen, you could be using Zoom video, to say, hey, here's our feature and how it works, and this is what you're doing wrong. And it's just me and a talking head. There's nothing wrong with all this. Now my favorite tool, by the way, is my wonderful DJI Osmo Pocket. That's my go-to camera, costs 350 US. It's this size, and it has a three-axis gimbal, and I literally put it in my pocket. It's 4K video, so no matter where, whenever I go to a show like this, and I see really smart people that has a brand, and everybody knows who they are. I pull up my pocket and I say, hey, how you doing? And we do this. And then I post it, hashtag, and all the wonderful stuff. Now I've got all her followers, and his followers, and his followers. And they didn't cost me anything extra. And all you people think I'm really smart. I'm hanging out with the cool kids. No, I'm at an event together with them, that's it. All right, you're driving your message. That's all you're doing. All right. So this is, everybody's got a hill they die on, right? 
I always tell my wife when we have challenges with our kids, she gets upset. I'm like, is this the hill you want to die on? Is this where you're going to dig in? You can dig in on every single fight you want to. But after a while, you do that, they tune you out. So what's the hill you want to die on? For me, it's this one. You don't have to agree with me. I will tell you this. The biggest piece of feedback we get over and over and over again is this. Simple little thing. Your content is so incredible. Your content is like, wow. That's what I get. And what they're actually talking about is not what I say. Lord knows it's not what I say. <laughs> what they're talking about is that it actually looks good. That's what they're talking about. So recently, a week ago, in fact, I made a post out there that said, you know, how do you differentiate yourself? It's all about quality. And as you might imagine, everyone in the world disagrees with me. No, it's the message, you know, quality of content beats quality of production. And I don't disagree with that, right? And here's my response. If two people, you and your competitor, create the same message because there's a lot of people voicing opinions, who does the audience trust more? Let me give you an example. So this is a fellow whom I have a lot of respect for. He sells high-end conferences. Not unlike this, you know. We go to his show every year. I spend $50,000 a year with him. Here's an example. Hello everybody, Gavin Harris here from the B2B Marketing Expo. It's my first video on LinkedIn. I just wanted to share some exhibition advice um, as we're entering into exhibition season. Um, generating good footfall with your stand is obviously incredibly important. What do you see when you see that? Any comments? I'll tell you what I see. I see a guy who's trying, love it. I see a guy whose head is in the lower third and he's got two thirds of ceiling over his head. I see poor lighting, all right? It's kind of muffled sound because he's just using his phone, pros and cons, like everything else. But I love that he tried. But what he was doing there was he was sharing his knowledge. That's what he was doing. He was saying, you're going into this season, this is what you need to know. And what he had was fantastic. So based on that, same thing. This is, I went to the Toronto Sales Forum event. This is, you know, the big players are at this event. And I'm on the train, I'm on VIA coming back. So in other words, I'm doing the same thing Gavin did. So last night I had a chance to speak at the Enterprise Sales Forum in Toronto. And there was a question asked about what's the one piece of advice you can give to sales folks. And I thought about it long and hard. And my answer to them was personal brand. So I polled the audience. I said, how many of you post on LinkedIn once a day, and it was a small percentage. How many of you post on LinkedIn once a week? Another small percentage. Bad noise, trains loud as hell. Question, honest question, which video, both videos gave great advice, which video are you inclined to believe more, to listen to more? Okay, and that was a bad video. Background noise, everything else. And that's all I'm trying to say is quality does matter. Yes, the message is important but quality matters. All right, just some use cases here. Because I said, what's your objective? This is how we use it. We break it down into promotion, news tracking, live streams, brand building, website content, and attention grabbing. Um, how am I doing for time and curiosity? Anybody know? Oh, they're getting the, the hook. I'll go real fast. On the promotional side, we do this for releases, trade shows, new re news releases, webinars, podcasts. We promote the heck out of everything. Newsjacking. Newsjacking says when something's current and hot, the election, President Trump, whoever's coming in on immigration or not coming in on immigration, you name it, whatever's hot, the budget, you get out there and do a video and you use the same hashtag because they're already filtering for it. Every single news media organization, every single individual out there is on Reddit and is on Twitter and is on LinkedIn and on Facebook. You're going to get picked up. Live streams. Don't, for goodness sake, don't. Videos, webinars are a video. Okay, use the video. Don't not use video when you're doing webinars. Podcasts, even though our podcasts are audio, we film it entirely in video. Why? Because what I do is I take that little two minute video clip of me talking with the other person and I use that to promote it on social media, promote it on our website. So they say two talking heads, but the actual podcast is still audio. Have an opinion. You have to have an opinion. If you don't have the courage to have an opinion, you're just gonna be lost in the noise. Explainer videos are amazing. 
make them interesting, sub one minute, compelling, all right? Lots, every single piece of content I make, white paper, blogs, ebooks, guess what they all have? A video that goes with it. Because chances are they're not gonna read the text, we just saw the stats on that, but they'll watch the video and be attention grabbing. You actually be bold. Final, I'll stop here in this slide. This is the number one thing. You gotta be consistent. I do, on average, three to five videos a week. I do it at set times, set durations. On average, my team is making three to five videos a day. They make them for our support organization. They make them for our customer success organization. They make them for our products so we can overline the features. They make it for social media. This is huge. Everything's gotta have captions. Everything's gotta have a take. And then mix it up occasionally. We'll leave it on this final video to have some fun. And this is what I mean by mix it up. <laughs> it's Halloween, that time of year, where our fears consume us. Our fears make us unable to act. Do you have a fear? Many of you I know are afraid of using the phone. Using the phone is awfully scary. Let's shine some light on this. The fact of the matter is folks, it doesn't need to be scary at all. Using the phone while daunting is not that hard. I know your fears. Your fears are, what if I call all those people and nobody answers? Or what if I call and I get a gatekeeper and they don't let me through? Or better yet, if I call and I get through the gatekeeper and, and they answer and then I stammer and I flub it entirely. Or I don't flub it, I say it and they yell at me for interrupting their day. All of that is scary, I get it. So let's get down to how we're gonna fix this. I've got Deb Calver here. She is an incredible sales trainer. I've got Fiona Tibble. She is a sales development rep with Vanilla Soft. Together, these two incredible women are gonna talk about how to deal with your fears, how they've overcome their fears, and what you can do to not make it scary when you're doing outbound calling. My name is Daryl Prale, and I'm with Vanilla Soft. <laughs> We were promoting a webinar where we had some amazing influencers on the webinar. The point of the matter is I put myself out there and I made sure this became a sponsored post on Facebook and on LinkedIn because it was Halloween. This got a ton of traffic. It was free. I don't have $250 million. I have social media. I have a cell phone. I have video and I have the capacity to put a story out there and to pitch it in lots of different ways because that's how people really want to see your message. I'm Daryl Prale. Please follow me on LinkedIn.